It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's episode of Comparative Mythology, we're gonna ask what story actually predates the Book of Job and where does the Book of Job actually come from? When you go to a Christian apologist site, you'll realize that the dating for the Book of Job is somewhere roughly around 1440 BCE and that the earliest might be as early as 450 BCE. Now the legend of Corinth can be dated back roughly around 1500 to 1200 BCE. Before we talk about the legend of Corinth, it's very important to refresh our memory about the details about the story for the book of Job. And so let's listen to the audiobook and compare the audiobook to what we hear and read within that particular legend of Corinth. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewth evil? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead." and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose, and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. As you guys can hear from the audiobook, it seems as though that Job remains very faithful to the God of the Bible, even though the God of the Bible and Satan team together to, you know, torment Job, but he wanted, you know, remain faithful because he had faith in the God of the Bible. Now, what exactly is the story for the story of Comet? What exactly are the similarities and the differences between the two stories? Regarding Corinth, King, El, River, the clan of Corinth died out. The house of the kings was destroyed. Though there were seven brothers, eight sons of a mother, Corinth, his children wiped out. Corinth is devoid of an end state. He has taken his wife, his distant bride. He took a wife, but she departed. Progeny by a mother had been his. One third died through healthy, one fourth of disease, one fifth carry off, one sixth by the lands of yam, and one seventh fell by the sword. Corinth see his progeny, see his progeny ruin, greatly depleted of his power, and his totality of family has died off, and his totality of succession. He entered his room, 
He reaps while uttering words he shed tears. His tears will pour like crack on the ground, like one fifth crack on the bread. As he cries, he falls asleep. As he shed tears asleep, sleep overcomes him. He lies in sleep in his sorrow. And his dream, El descends in his vision, the father humanity, and he draws close, asking Corinth, who is Corinth that she should cry, the good one, the lot of El, that he should shed tears? Does he desire the monarchy to bull his father, or the sovereignty like the father of humanity? Before we return back to the story, it's very important to say that El is basically this guy right here. He's actually the main deity of 72 gods within the divine pantheon of gods within the ancient Canaanite religion. He's actually the husband of Ashura. He's also the father of Baal. He's also the father of Yahweh. And Yahweh happens to be the main god of the Bible. Why do I need silver and yellow gold together in its place? and perpetual slaves, teams of three horses, chariots from the courtyard of a handmaid's son. Grant that I may get sons, grant that I may increase offspring. Bull, his father, El, answer, while weeping, correct, while shedding tears. O oh, good one, lot of El, you may wash and ridden yourself. Wash your hands to the elbow. As you guys can clearly see, both stories are about basically a character who does not abandon their particular god. And this case is actually El, and in this case for the other story for the book of Job is Yahweh. Now what's so interesting to me is that because El and Yahweh are related, it seems as though for the book of Job that Yahweh overthrows his own father when it comes down to this particular issue over a gradual period of time, because essentially Yahweh was seen as a minor god, but gradually over a period of time it seemed as though that he got more and more popular, that he became the main deity of this divine pantheon before the pantheon actually disappeared for all eternity after the whole sort of message with the whole Greco-Roman ideas. So what do you guys think about this comparison? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.